This video is an example of calculating the Fourier transform of a periodic signal. In this case, the periodic signal is a train of pulses. Each pulse in the train is uh, a shift, a time shift, of this basic pulse called P of T. The uh, period is capital T because each pulse is delayed by a multiple of T, and there's an infinite number of these pulses. I've gone ahead and written down the Fourier series expansion of this periodic signal. The next step in calculating the Fourier transform of this periodic signal is calculating the Fourier series coefficients, x sub k. I've gone ahead and written down the definition of the Fourier series coefficients. It is the integral, it's 1 over t, times the integral over one period of the function times this complex exponential. And then I've also gone ahead and substituted for x of t uh, this pulse train, as you see here. On the next line, I've gone ahead and uh, taken another step, which is to reorder the integration and summation. And now I'm going to do a change of variables by letting u equal t minus lt. We can rearrange this to get u, or t is equal to u plus lt. And then if we look at the limits, when t is equal to 0, u will be equal to minus lt. And when t is equal to capital T, the upper limit, u will be equal to uh, minus l minus 1 t. So if we use that change of variables, then we get this expression. What we can do to simplify this is to recognize, first of all, that uh, we get cancellation of t in the exponent. And then all that's left in the exponent is 2 pi times an integer. So this whole complex exponential basically simplifies to 1. That drops out of the expression. And then we're left with evaluating this integ integral and then performing the summation. To illustrate what's going on here, let's suppose that the integrand is this function that I've drawn here. So this is p of u. And then the integral is uh, chopped up into pieces. Let's suppose this is minus lt minus l minus 1t minus l, minus 2, t, and so on. And the integral that you see here is, the, is uh, integrating from minus lt to minus l, minus 1, t. And so we're basically picking up this area. And then what the summation is telling us to do is add that to the areas of all of the other integrands. And we sum from minus infinity to infinity. So you can see that essentially what we're doing here, what, what is equivalent, is if we take that function and just simply integrate from minus infinity to infinity, we'll get the same answer. So that's what we'll do now, is just write that expression mathematically, we have an integral from minus infinity to infinity. Again, the sum and the finite limits go away and become an infinite, uh, an integral with infinite limits. And then the next thing that I want to do is another substitution where I've made the substitution f instead of k over, u, over t. And the reason that I've done that is simply to help us recognize that what's left is the Fourier transform of this function p of u. So I'll just write that here. That's the function, or that's the Fourier transform p of f evaluated at f equal k over t. What I find interesting about this example is that if the function that we start with is a periodic signal that um, is a pulse train defined in terms of the basic pulse p of t, 
then the Fourier series coefficients are essentially samples of the continuous time Fourier transform of that pulse. So we see that replication of a basic pulse, periodic replication of a basic pulse in the time domain corresponds to a sampling operation in the frequency domain. To complete this example, we'll return to where we started um, with a periodic signal that is constructed from a train of pulses uh, built from a, a basic pulse, P of T. I've gone ahead and written out the Fourier series representation of that periodic signal. And then to calculate the Fourier transform once again, this is a review, but uh, what we'll do is just calculate the Fourier transform of both sides of this expression. So x of t becomes x of f. The sum uh, in the time domain uh, stays. A sum in the frequency domain, the coefficients come through x of k. And then the, uh, the, delta, the uh, complex exponential becomes a delta function, as we have seen. Now to complete the example, what we want to do then is substitute um, the expression for xk that we derived on the previous page. And that is uh, that gives us 1 over t, a sum, p of k over t, delta f minus k over t. And then as a final step, I want to write um, this one more time uh, using the sifting property of delta functions, but using it in reverse. So we'll pull out P of F, and we can write the rest of this as 1 over T, a sum on K delta F minus K over T. If you... Um, work this in the opposite direction and multiply p of f through and then use the sifting property of the delta function, you get back to this expression. But what's interesting here is to recognize um, uh, another, another property of the continuous time Fourier transform appearing here. Notice that we could write this pulse train as the basic pulse p of t convolved with an infinite train of impulses, periodic train of impulses. That's one way we could think about producing this periodic train of pulses. And we know that um, convolution in the time domain corresponds to multiplication in the frequency domain, and we see that, see that appearing directly here um, because the Fourier transform of our periodic signal x of t is x of f, and we see that that is equal to the Fourier transform of the basic pulse times the Fourier transform of a pulse train. So it must be that the Fourier transform of the basic impulse train is another impulse train. And we've seen that also in another video.